physique, they play that sort of football. And the Italians don't like playing Austrian teams because they're, they find them very hard to subdue. They, they, they're very strong physically and also mentally. So I don't think this tie is over by any means yet because, uh, you know, Inter will find that they won't give up uh, Austria. Is there some rivalry among uh, Italians and, and, and Austrians? There, no, there, are there used to be in the old days, but it's gone now. It's sort yes. of fizzled out. Uh, I think uh, Salzburg's uh, main problem is with the players uh, that, they, uh, that are not playing today. I think Jurkovic might be playing, actually, because I was looking at the lineup. Uh, but uh, the player they'll be missing is Pfeiffenberger in the middle of the yes, central. Jurkovic is playing uh, with an injection, I believe. The two captains and the referee are on the park. The referee is Jim McCluskey of Scotland. Let's go now to Martin Tyler. Ball in its finery here, San Siro always a splendid sight, even in the teeming rain. Inter tonight without the suspended Alessandro Bianchi, he was sent off in Austria of course, but Fontelan, who was suspended from that game, is available tonight. So much riding on the two Dutchmen, Bergkamp and Jonk, who've not inspired Inter in Serie A, but they have been very influential in this competition. Bergkamp with eight goals, equal top scorer in this season's UEFA Cup, alongside Schmidt of Karlsruhe. Salzburg have been involved in suspensions throughout this tournament. 36 cautions in 11 games, and the latest bands affect two of their better goal scorers, Feipenberger and Stadler. They're out. The good news is that Feisinger, a disciplined marker, has served his suspension. So too has... Adi Hütter, a strong midfield player, and their top scorer in the Austrian league, Nikola Jurcevic. He plays tonight, though he's been back in his native Croatia, getting treatment for a strained muscle. A bit touch and go for him. Well, Jim McCluskey from Scotland will not feel out of place in this particular weather. It's very wet. And Inter, such strong favourites, even before the first leg because Salzburg have really overturned the odds to get this far. The first Austrian club to reach the UEFA Cup final. And well, though they played two weeks ago, Inter, in the classic Italian style, snatched the only goal of the game. So all but 8,000 in a crowd of 80,000. That's the 8,000, of course, the... Austrian fans who've been lucky enough to get tickets to come here. The vast majority hoping and indeed expecting Inter to end a wretched season domestically with a major European prize. Well, here's Feiersinger. Salzburg have come here pledging to attack. And that's a pretty promising start. Inter finishing in their lowest league position ever in 13th place in Serie A. And they've had one or two scares even in this UEFA Cup on their own ground. Particularly when Borussia Dortmund seem to be heading for a sensational turn of events having been beaten in Germany but Inter just uh, escaped and have kept on going rather like Bergkamp tried to do there no foul, no suggestion of contact and Jurcevic chasing very fluently given his injury scare I watched him closely in the warm-up when the teams came out and he was talking to the trainer flexing a damaged thigh not at all convincing, really, but he moved well then. And they'll need him to keep on moving. Salzburg have to score. A draw tonight will be enough for Inter. On the ball, Battistini. Now a member of the old guard here, Bergami. Huta, the number 11, giving it away. The number 11 for Inter, well known to you all, Ruben Sosa. Bergkamp almost seizing a pass and turning. 
towards goal. Salzburg glad that he couldn't do that. Bergamit. Orlando is in the Bianchi role, wide on the right tonight. He's only 30, Beppe Bergamit, but he seems to have been around forever. Remember, of course, coming up for 12 years ago now, he was in Italy's World Cup winning team in Spain. Sosa, Bergkamp, Nicola Berti, who scored the goal in Austria, in Vienna, of course, because Salzburg Stadium limited to a capacity of around 8,500 by UEFA regulation, so they moved away. Good touch by Sosa, almost coming off there between the three main attacking forces for Inter tonight. Here's Bergkamp. Bergkamp claiming that he was uh, badly treated there by Winkelhofer. Fontelan has a throw and not a free kick. Sosa. Fontelan has done well, couldn't quite lift the cross over Furstala. Huta. Trying to get it back from Wilczewicz. Typical piece of doggy defending by Bergami. Orlando and Manicone. Fibionk. But Orlando doesn't get very far. It's a lovely night for playing, really. Anyone who's ever kicked a ball knows the advantage of a slippery top. Sometimes helps the touch, certainly helps the sliding tackles. Foul by Bertie on Feiersinger. Bertie, who's very much back in the news here in Italy, with that goal, he's in the... Arrigo Sacchi preliminary party for Italy in the World Cup. He's negotiating a new contract. A mistake there by Huta. And Sosa's away. That could be a catastrophe. Good stop by Conrad. And it needed to be. To the great relief of uh, Adi Huta, who's still apologising to anyone who wants to see it. the arm raised. He gave it to, of all people, the dangerous Uruguayan. And Conrad made a significant stop. It was a very good chance for Inter. I just wonder about their mentality tonight. This UEFA competition has been a real lifeline for their morale. As they've been sinking in Serie A. Only just one point. Incredible to think of it. Inter just one point clear of relegation season domestically over in Italy now, not so in Austria where Salzburg are pressing for what would be their first ever Austrian league title. Really have been a revelation this season. Flag is up against Ruben Sosa. Thirty-eight-year-old Heribert Weber, sweeper, wearing number three. His last major international match. He is retiring at the end of the season. Been a wonderful career. He's actually in Austria's 1978 World Cup side in Argentina. That gives you some idea of the length of his career. Good team Austria had in those days with the great Hans Krankel. They've never had a club inscribe their name on a major European trophy. It would be a big turnaround tonight, but they've come here pretty much up for the occasion. 
Ireland there. 8,000 fans made a terrific impression when they got into the stadium. Many of them standing in the rain for a couple of hours before the teams came out. Fontelan, 30. Fontelan naturally left-sided, working that flank. Giving into a corner. Ruben Sosa will take it. If Inter score, one thing that cannot happen tonight is extra time. Palestini, who's dangerous in the opposing penalty area, goes up well again. Bergami, hooked away by Liner, back by Paganin. Certainly the Austrians won't be unhappy about the climatic conditions here. Bertie. Oh, and Sosa was coming on the blind side of Furstala. Whether he knew about him or not, we'll never know. He played the ball safely enough. Here's Marquinho, the Brazilian. It's a bit of a nervy flick at the ball, though. Recently, as last Friday, Salzburg had a splendid 6-0 win over their championship rivals, Austria-Vienna. Marquinho was uh, in marvellous form, getting a couple of goals. His first for Salzburg, he came to the club in January. Jurcevic, tackled by Manicone. Strange clearance by Bergami, but it was effective enough. His international day is over now. Bertie. No foul, it's Marquinho. And here's uh, Peter Artner, who nearly ran for Jurcevic. And there would have been Bedlam in the San Siro. That led to a goal. The supporters and indeed the Inter players were waiting for Jim McCluskey to blow his whistle, but he didn't do that. Poor Stala. Line out at the back of Bergkamp. Line oh, missing out. Giving on well forward. Certainly got an eye for goal. Strike it well from midfield. He strikes this one. And the goalkeeper's main problem there is handling it cleanly as it bounced in front of him. Sosa was moving in to punish any fumble. Two Dutchmen on the same wavelength here. Young shot. And again, Conrad looking impressive in goal. But Bergkamp is bearing down here. acceleration and defenders were wilting in his wake just wonder whether there was a bit of tugging here he tried to outside the area and in the end Faber just had enough corner Banistini Sliding it forward well. Jurcevic. He's a Croatian coach, of course, Otto Baric. He's also Croatian as well. But we won't see too much of him tonight. He's still banned from the bench. This is the final game of that five-match suspension. Marquinhos. Jurcevic, twisting and turning and tumbling in the end. Orlando. Eichner, who likes 
down the left side, he has defensive responsibilities, but he does love to push forward, but he was chasing back then to slide into the tackle on Orlando. Here is Eichner. Sosa should collect this. Liner closest to him. He blocks the attempted cross. Bertie. This possessed fairly enough by Finkelhofer. Huta. He gets within range. He's got a terrific shot. Adi Huta. Scored sensationally for Austria recently against Scotland. Oh, Burkamp's onside. No flag, and there's no need for one either. <laughs> here in the television commentary positions, I have to say, all the Austrian broadcasters have come here wearing flags, <laughs> colours of Salzburg, and they were waving their hands, to, trying to get the linesman to wave his flag. Sure that their uh, commentaries are too objective. We'll try and keep it totally neutral for you here on SBS. to have the ball in any case for Stahler who is not a full-time player the number five for Salzburg he's a personnel manager in the uh, company owned by the president of Salzburg it's very much a uh, working appointment too first season but it uh, hasn't been so successful and this is second played well by Bergami met well by Eigner Jim McCluskey giving every indication that he's going to do his best to allow this game to flow Uta Enjoy playing in Italy. Both he and Jonk have won this competition before a couple of years ago with Ajax. The only time in the last five years the cup hasn't come, the UEFA Cup that is, to Italy. And of course Ajax just got past an Italian team in that final Torino. Very close thing. They won it on the away goals rule. So it could easily have been five out of five. But, uh, trying to make sure tonight it's five out of six. Orlando. So it's both rather bogged down in their own half. Manicone. It's well spotted by Eigner. Salzburg came here yesterday in a plane piloted by none other than Nicky Lauda, of course, owns an airline in Austria. Orlando with a throw. Third cap. Here's Sosa. Manicone. There's Artner who has a lot of good work penalty area to penalty area Salzburg's midfield. Experienced international player. Paganin. Crowd a bit confused, I think. Not quite sure of Inter's approach. Certainly not sure 
their consistency after what's happened this season. That's through to Huta. Tripped by Bavistini. Marquinho, who nominally is one of two sorts of both forwards, along with Jurcevic, but is really panning out as a advanced midfield man, always prepared to get back into that area when it's required. Just nudging it past Battistini, brought down the free kick wasted though for Salzburg. that made sure that the referee noticed that one. Che in Peru con successo che ha segnato due reti nell'ultima partita quella importante di campionato contro Really luring for Stala in. Well, Conrad is concerned here with a bit of justification. It's just possible but and Sosa might come up with a shot. Fim Jonk on the ball at the moment. Sosa having a look at the angles. Assessing out where there might be a gap. Here he goes, it's rising and veering wide. He's played his part in Serie A this season. Ruben Sosa often with a free kick or two along the way. 16 league goals. Could have been fifth place in the country. Signori of Lazio again at the head of that list with 23. <laughs> Found by Feiersinger. But he's such an expressive character. Whether happy or sad, so we know it. Nil-nil here in the second leg of the UEFA Cup final. Inter with one goal safely banked in Vienna. Sosa. Manicone trying to keep the pressure on. Alfonso <laughs> heavily fell by Dickelhofer. Talking to, he comes back and apologizes. Fontela, who was signed as a goal getting player, is finding himself basically on the left hand side of the defense in this game, and Joby has done recently in other matches as well. Service to requirements. 
those watch this space scenarios. Long from Battistini. Well, that's a foul not by the player that headed the ball, Weber, but by Fushdala. Weber was allowed to head the ball because Fushdala just hustled Bergkamp out of the way. Still raining heavily. San Siro still nil nil in the second leg. Luton Sosa again, ignoring the uh, distance. The optimistic hit, but he scored from there before. Arthur can only put it out. And hear what the aficionados here thought of that. This is Jurcevic. to be strong in the early stages but uh, to press again with Bergami the Austrians could get a 1-0 advantage after 90 minutes we would then go to extra time but only if that's the scoreline at the end of regulation time Arthur heads it down Jurcevic goes down Patistini was the defender at his back Sosa, quite a spread to the play with both teams operating with sweepers. Paganin is one of the markers. Marquinho is Pakistini tidying up as the free man for Inter. And the man they call Methuselah in Austria. Harry Faber, the 38-year-old, will be 39 next month to that job. Salzburg. Here he is actually having to go for the ball with Bergkamp. Knocks it off Bertie who times his runs well from deeper positions. That's been one of his trademarks down the years. Didn't quite get there that time. First game, they didn't take their chances. They may uh, live to regret it, but they're still very much in the thick of things here. So, sir. So. Oh, Orlando, not quite. It's a good idea. Quick pitch now, now with the rain on it. The ball just zipping off it beyond the run of Orlando. Leo Liner. 
instrument as it was his arm. Marquinho trying to get up there alongside Jurcevic. Piasinger. Now Ali Huta. That deflected off Bjork and it's a throw to the Austrian club. Austria Casino Salzburg. Casino the sponsors. Is now incorporated in the official club name. Ruter. The whistle had gone. And Inter have conceded a free kick. Where Salzburg might be able to show what they've been working on in the training ground. They've got the Brazilian Marquinho. Assess the possibilities here. Babe has gone up on a story it would be if he could score. Hartner making a run out towards the ball and getting it. They've created a better angle for themselves at Salzburg. Hockerland clears. And Bergkamp is on the break here. Meyersinger, the last man back, but Ruben Sosa gets away from him. Back for Bergkamp. And again, the hero for Salzburg is this 29-year-old goalkeeper, Otto Conrad. Bergkamp and Ruben Sosa engineered everything there, but the ball ending up in the back of the net. Fontelard, remember all that came from a cleverly worked free kick by Salzburg. Bertie, oh, nearly back to him from Ruben Sosa. When Marquinho crossed the ball, the last thing you'd have expected only a few seconds later was Salzburg's goalkeeper performing the heroics, but that's what happened. Eigner. Oh, he's lost out to Orlando and he was lucky then. The number six for the Austrians to get away with it the first time, he's cleared it decisively. Pushed up. It's Huta. Oh, no. so, tackle on it by Paganin. Marquinho. Is he going to make something for himself here? In the end, he was trying to slip it through to Jurcevic. Uh, Typical running by Bergkamp, the pass too long for him. Well, there's still a buzz around the ground. Sosa to Bergkamp, and then you expect it back in the net. Conrad came flying out. Terrific goalkeeping. of Salzburg players in the wars at the moment. Winkelhofer on the far side. And, uh, the liner and Weber flexing muscles as well. They're back on their feet. Just to talk a little bit about Conrad, the goalkeeper, in this uh, injury break. Of course, uh, he had that magnificent, what he described as a dream camp, true literally, because he had had this dream that there would be a penalty shootout against Eintracht Frankfurt, that he would save a couple and then score the winning penalty himself. That's what happened. So he has been very responsible for Salzburg getting this far, and he's kept them in business. There's some outstanding work here in the first half at San Siro. Sosa. Come for Bertie. Fire single saw to that. Huta. Couldn't take it off. Bergkamp. For Bertie. 
Well, there have been a number of nearly occasions for Inter. <laughs> That's uh, the uh, wearing his heart on his sleeve reaction that Bertie I was talking about earlier. He was uh, rightly disappointed with himself then. They're not really sitting back at Inter and playing on the break. Bergkamp and Ruben Sosa are pushing up on the back men. And as I say, the play is quite uh, stretched at times. It's giving in a reasonable open feel to the football. Marquinho. Getting it through well to Buta. Oh, he might try a shot. He does! That's very much one from Adi Huta's catalogue. Great try. And Zenga was flying through the air to pour it away and has hurt himself in doing so. But he really can have a crack from long range. And that was a severe stretch and then he hit the post as he landed. Adi Huta with a shot that was certainly going to find its way into the top corner. Now, I wouldn't want to be disrespectful to Walter Zenger here, but he's a natural showman, and it wouldn't be beyond him to make a real meal of something like this. He's done well for his side. Well, there was a crack there, there's no doubt about it, on the post. But it's not lasting damage. Way by Bergami. Well, Hitter, who had the shot, then unable to keep the ball in play. Manikone. Jovic, a little nippier than Jonk, and then finding a particularly slippery patch in the San Siro pitch. Weber doesn't quite go forward as often these days as in the past, but he's instigated an attack here for Salzburg. Marquinho. Weber. Ruta pulling away to make some space for himself. Marquinhos just inside him. It's a uh, cross that doesn't do anything more than put into in possession. And suddenly now they've got to turn back. Marquinhos finding Huta. Can he work it onto the right foot again? He can't. Eigner can though, and that's why. Eigner was the player fouled twice by Alessandro Bianchi in that uh, two uh, yellow cards equals one red card incident that has kept Bianchi out of his second leg. Bergami. Now Manicone. Back for Battistini. While it stays this way, it's okay for Inter, but there have been enough for scares for them to know that it's not the sort of margin they were watching. surely no uh, foul on Ruben Sosa there, certainly not in the mind of the referee, a few hopeful cries around the stadium from the Interfaithful on the game goes Costala concentrating on the ball maybe uh, at angle getting a bit of a wrap around the Uruguayan sometimes slow motion can be uh, deceptive contact looks uh, more damaging than it does in normal speed
first stop. It's the uh, Austrian voices you can hear singing behind the Conrad's goal. They've had a great view, the travelling fans, of the excellence of their goalkeeper in the first half. Marquinho. Now Huta. Orlando. Again, Bergkamp's off the ball play, impressive, so that he gives himself time to control. But Inter has gone on from that, and there's going to be a yellow card here for Orlando. who uh, does like to drive forward from midfield was doing just that Faber is there and Marquinho as well he's moving off to the left but decides that Inter hadn't reacted, so he played the ball to him. It's a shame about the cross. Pontalan offside, Ruben Sosa. by Faber and again oh they are riding their luck Ruben Sosa's almost had as many passes from uh, opponents as he's had from his teammates but he just even on that trusty left foot can't hit the bullseye turning well against Manicone and here's Winkelhofer coming down the right hand side Wojtovic knowing I think that he couldn't reach the cross Zenga's annoyed because he's of the opinion that the Croatian is doing a bit of acting here and there's no need for it to, to take the refereeing of the game into their own hands Jurcevic there Manistini was doing his bit to start with, but not really enough to send the number seven down. Battistini. degree of success in these competitions for Austrian clubs the two have ever reached a European final they both lost Austria Vienna to Anderlecht and rapid Vienna to Everton in the 70s one in the 80s both in the uh, Cup Winners Cup Salzburg trying to extend the frontiers for the Austrian game. And, uh, making sure here in the first half, not without a lot or two, that we are really seeing a contest. It was, I suppose, touch and go if Inter were to get a flying start. There'd be no way back for Salzburg. That hasn't happened. Thanks largely to this fella here. It's his night, perhaps, because that was a miss kick and it went straight to Eigner. And he's got to try again. 
Ben Sosa, and look at that. Pushed up. Vucevic, deep to it by Bergami. Says if Salzburg win, he'll have his hair cut. First half drawing to a close. Interpreted as a lack of interest. Pontola. Bergamy. I think space in these areas, it's further forward that it's more congested. Manicone. The uh, great boost for Inter if they could get a goal in uh, the time that remains before half time. Now, Fiersinger and Montalan square up. And it really seems to be a storm in a teacup. Klaski gives a yellow card to both players. The front of man was uh, rushing away. I'm not sure it was aimed for him, even though uh, certainly Fiasing has been uh, punished, and I'm pretty sure Fontelan as well. It seemed entirely unnecessary. Fontelan and now back with Marquinho. Eichner, getting the better of Orlando, has been booked as well. He's been careful with his tackling, and he was. And then Eichner caught Manicone, and in to get a free kick. A rather bad-tempered end to the first half. Orlando did well. Looking forward to this time his challenges now. He played the ball and then Manicone subsequently went down. Free kick taken by Bim Yonk. Looking for Bertie. Pickelhofer. to stoppage time. So so. Well, it's never as easy as it might appear when one team knows that a draw is good enough to gain the prize that they're seeking. It's not exactly Inter being caught in two minds, but that might happen if it stays this way deep into the second half. Time whistle. Well, it's 
still a very interesting scenario here at San Siro. The only goal of this UEFA Cup final came just over two weeks ago by Nicola Berti for Inter. And Inter, although they've had opportunities here, the better opportunities at the half, they haven't been able to add to that because Otto Conrad has been in splendid form in the Salzburg goal. There's been a little edge to proceedings as well. Look at this again between Fontelan and the fiery fire singer. But Salzburg have played their part with the Hooters' terrific shot, which Senger kept out for some uh, discomfort to himself. At half-time, in the second leg of the UEFA Cup final, nil-nil here, still 1-0 to Inter overall. Le formazioni di Inter e Salisburgo per il secondo tempo di questa finale di ritorno di Coppa UEFA c'è grande tensione sugli spalti, è una partita ancora aperta a tutte le soluzioni. Infatti vedete il risultato. Back to San Siro where you join 80,000 fans who are watching and wondering how this will all finish tonight. Still possibilities for the underdogs from Austria. One goal from them without reply would take us into extra time. Just in case you're concerned that the fog might have come down during the half-time interval, I can reassure you that it's just the usual and very colourful reaction from supporters in these parts with the flares and the firecrackers. And the visibility on this very wet night starting to clear as Jim McCluskey prepares to get the second half underway whatever happens to Salzburg they have really been the surprise package A wonderful recovery in the third round when they were 2-0 down from the first leg against Sporting Lisbon it was 0-0 in the home game at half time they then Got the three goals they required to see off the Portuguese club. And then Eintracht and Karlsruhe, two German victims. Most unusual that, where traditionally the Austrian sides have rather succumbed to those from their neighboring, that neighboring country. But they start the second half with plenty of optimism. Inter have had plenty of humiliations this season and surely this would be the ultimate one if they don't collect the cup at the end of this evening. That would uh, perhaps break the patience of those supporters who found it very hard to cope with what's been happening here with uh, Milan in the stadium. To lap. Corner to Inter. Both Bergami and Battistini have made their way forward as they usually do. Fontelan is very good in the air himself. And it's knocked away from the head of Battistini. Orlando. Fontelan trying to guide it wide for either Bergkamp or Sosa. Fell rather between the two stools and all in to get is this throw back in their own half. The longer it stays at 0-0, maybe the edgier into will become. Senga taking his time. Direct route into. And now Nicola Berti can't control it at a crucial moment. And there uh, has been a mounting number of those opportunities in the penalty area to get an end product. They've certainly had the greatest share of possession, you feel, into. Here, well, 
that was a pretty straightforward ball to take with a first touch. The first touch there was not up to scratch for Bertie. And here's Sosa. Ruben Sosa has put it wide. Well, the only consolation in these circumstances is that if he keeps getting in, one will surely end up in the back of Conrad's net. This time, not even the goalkeeper was required. He had to wait for the ball to get there. That didn't make it any easier, but even so, any contact or foul was outside the area, but the referee right to let Ruben Sosa go on and have the chance. Hartner, Bertie nipping in. Bergamy, over the top of liner, is it? Not quite. Jonk. Sosa, slipping liner. Bergkamp pointing across. Well, it was way, way beyond his reach. Inter beat Rapid Bucharest in the first round, then Apollon from Limassol. Norwich City, the English club in Europe for the first time. Gave them a few problems, but it was 1-0 to Inter home and away. And then that uh, strange saga with Borussia Dortmund in the quarter-final, and Inter played as good, well as they have done in the tournament to win 3-1 in Germany, and then lost 2-1 at home just to slip through. Cagliari, they were beaten in Sardinia in the first leg, but turned it round with a sumptuous performance here in the second leg. They're struggling to recapture that style at the moment. But here's Ruben Sosa. Conrad heads it, but only to Bergkamp. Can't snare it in straight away. Ruben Sosa still chasing. Goal kick. Is this going to be a repeat of the first leg when the uh, home team had the chances and didn't take any of them? And the away team did get the goal. Could be. Jurcevic. Patistini. To Sosa. Too much on the header beyond Bergkamp. It'd be quite a double for Nicola Berti if it stays this way. He got the decisive goal when Inter won the UEFA Cup three years ago against Rover in an all Italian final. Fire Singer. Singer has to go down to his right hand side. Singer, as if responding or on some half-time initiative from the coaching staff, not from Otto Baric himself, he's banned from the dressing room, but to be more purposeful, to try and get some shots in, Hinkelhofer. Oh, well that's Peter Arthur getting his shot in, and again Singer. It's been a night, really, of superb goalkeeping. Finkelhofer did well. It came back here nicely from Marquinho, teed up for Arthur. There was Senger going full length to the other side. Marquinho will take the corner. Into pushing out. Eigner going on, following in, played the ball. Marquinho, that's too long. Well, the whistling might be for the referee for not giving a foul, but I think we saw, perhaps better than uh, 
supporters on the other side of the ground that although it was a robust challenge and in danger of causing damage, it was the ball that was met by Eigner. The whistling could also, of course, be some reaction to the worry that the Inter fans are feeling. Suddenly Zenga, who made that terrific save in the first half from Adi Huta, has now had to make two more. Nil-nil in this match. One goal for Inter in Austria, still giving them the balance of power. Confirmation the crowd indeed is just over 80,000 by some 300. Some, maybe the majority, coming uh, expecting a formality. It's certainly not that. Here comes Salzburg again. Not to land, can't do anything. Weisinger gets a corner. And uh, Battistini keeping his arms ostentatiously down by his side. Arthur will take the corner. for the goalkeeper from Liner this time. Well, it's as if playing towards their own supporters has been a real shot in the arm for Salzburg. They could have conceded a couple of goals at the start of this second half. They could have scored a couple now. Just sheer weight of numbers unsettling the marking at that corner. Leo Liner unmarked. This is as good a spell as we've had in the match, which has always been absorbing. And they've got bags of belief. And so too have the players in white here. Jurcevic. Liner. A stumble there by Paganini. He wasn't actually going to the ball. It was cleared by Badistini. Oh, there's a misjudgment by Kunstala. And Jonk with Sosa up with him. And the frustration turning to real anger in certain sections of the ground that it's uh, not making a better fist of this. Marquinhos. Finkelhofer could be offside here. Marquinhos shoots! Oh, one pass! I do not believe it! An amazing moment in this game. There was a worry as to whether Winkelhofer down the right might have been offside. Marquinhos ignored him. Here he is now, though. Inter. Hanging on to their advantage here by the skin of the teeth, by the paint on the two goalposts. Well, this is admirable play from the Austrians. But Marquinhos, and even when you see it again, as you will hear, it's uh, hard to comprehend. How often does this happen? Very rarely indeed. Both posts. And uh, it is still an uphill struggle for Salzburg, but my word, they're trying to level out the ground. Bergkamp.
bit of breathing space for Inter. Just looking at that replay again, I suspect that Zenga might have just got his fingertips to the shot to make the difference, to turn it on to the first post. Marquinhos flick, Jurcevic gets the better of Battistini, he hasn't got any support at all, as if Salzburg just had to put their hands collectively on their hips and get some air back into their lungs, such is the effort of chasing the situation here. The pursuing is promising, but they haven't caught up yet. Battistini. Bergami. Aiming for Ruben Sosa, not finding it. Here's Bergkamp, who could change things in a twinkle. And was threatening to do that just then. Even if Inter do score, of course, Salzburg would still need the two that they need at this moment for outright victory. But of course, then they would have to do it within the 90-minute period. There could be no extra time, as we said earlier. should be played uh, as a one-off game on a neutral ground but I must say the fascination of two-legged football or games played over two legs should I say is uh, very appealing at times and this is one of those times half an hour to go unless extra time is required dar fiato un Inter che sembra anche un po' in difficoltà da questo punto di vista sì secondo me Berti dopo aver recuperato la free kick to Inter to be taken here by Sosa both Battistini and Bergami have stayed back this time find Fontelan Necessary foul, really, in those circumstances by Winkelhofer. Fontelan wasn't going anywhere. Berti. Back up! Oh, the goalkeeper fumbles. got such a high level of technique Dennis Bergkamp that there was no surprise that the volley which was by no means easy was on target and Conrad relieved it came his way <laughs> almost making a mess of it Inter slowing the pace down whenever they can trading on the position that they still hold Salzburg, town in Austria, famous of course for the Mozart connections, famous for its international music festival, not really famous for its football. Sosa. Jok. Vim Jok. And Inter now will feel that they have one hand on the UEFA Cup. the Austrian players stand and look at each other
So at last the chance is taken. Sosa with Jonk to his left. Just got the run of it against Liner, and that was delightfully done as the goalkeeper came out to lift it over him. And Jonk, who certainly chipped in with his goals along this UEFA Cup road, has done it again in the final, in the second leg here, at a very crucial time. And he's done it very, very neatly indeed. So, the target there, as Artner crosses, is quite clear. We cannot have extra time now because of this moment from Wim Jong. And in less than half an hour, Salzburg have to score twice. If they do, they would win. As long as Inter, of course, don't score again. Zenga. Leo Liner lunged and didn't get there. And this time, Conrad, who's been a splendid last line of defence, just couldn't keep the defending going. But now, Salzburg have a corner. Taken by Marquinho. Eichner, what's he going to do here? And it's just over the top. From Weber. Ball coming all the way from the corner. Eigner beat Bergkamp. And as he fired it across, Weber was diving in. That was the incident here that led to the stoppage. Palestini's OK. And Inter are feeling a lot healthier as well. Goal coming after 62 minutes from Bim Jong. physical league that he referees in, in Scotland. Hartner. Well, it may well be that Salzburg have captured your hearts with their enterprise here, but it's going to be hard for them to capture what they really want, a piece of European silverware which would set a new standard for Austrian clubs. It's not impossible to that end. There is going to be a change. Martin Ammerhauser, the 19-year-old forward, who has played his part in the UEFA uh, Cup run, is going to come on. So they're going to take Winkelhofer off. This is all going on out of your picture at the moment. As Pontalan uh, is the latest in the line of Inter players in need of treatment. Hammerhauser comes on bearing instructions. It's not his own, it's his own will to win. Just passes them round. Montalan uh, heading towards the touchline. And maybe out of the game. 
which gives the opportunity for another of the uh, old guard to uh, come on. A man who's uh, on a falling with a delayed reaction. He's certainly unclear of where he is at the moment. And it's Riccardo Ferri, an archetypal Italian defender. Another member of the side that won the UEFA Cup three years ago. Along with Zenga, Haganin, Bergami of course, Battistini, Berti. So advantages in terms of experience going into this final. this season. It was a risky one. Senga didn't panic. Here's my Senga. They haven't uh, got the ball away. Driven back by Eigner, who seems to have been switched to the right-hand side a little more now. There's no one there for Ruben Sosa to flip the ball on to. Maybe it wasn't to be when he hit both posts. Sometimes players do sense that when they come as close and the ball doesn't go in. One of those nights. The night that Salzburg can certainly be proud of, whatever happens from now on. And uh, Davide Contolan taking around a stretcher here. Nearly another for Bertie. Eichner easily leaving Sosa. It's uh, Biasinger rather. Marquinho. Ruta. This is Ammerhauser. Can't find the cross. Ruben Sosa, who prefers to do his running towards the goal, he's attacking. Bergkamp, oh, and uh, Jonkin got through the centre again, unattended. We've got to take extra risks now, of course, Salzburg. Marquinho. He's got Ammerhauser in the penalty area, and the Jurcevic as well. Fire Senga, Senga kicks it away this time. Well, Zanga has got busier and busier as the night has worn on. And by still keeping his goal intact, he's played a major part in his, his final game for Inter. At this stage, it's one he can be very proud of. Ferry. Pagani. Saved Walter Zenga. Marquinho. Hammerhauser wanted to take the throw quickly. Jucevic very much on his wavelength. And he's forced a corner. And uh, back the feeling that maybe there was a handball on the cross. Going to be a, another substitution for Salzburg. Mikhail Steiner 
waiting to be spotted. Let's have a look at this. And the hand was down there. It couldn't be intentional. We haven't got a ball at the moment. That's what the delay's about. come off is Artner. So both the substitutes on now. It's a difficult corner for Zenga to deal with. A lot of whip on it. Goalkeeper in danger of coming out too far. The ball coming in behind him. But in the circumstances, well worth a dip. Well, Inter looking more and more as though they are going to make something substantial from what has been a sticky season for them. won't alter the fact that there will be uh, big changes here for next season. Orlando in the end getting his free kick. And Bertie! And Salzburg nearly paying a heavy price for arguing that and not watching what was going on. Quick thinking as it was indeed when Bertie scored Nil here, two nil on aggregate to Internazionale of Milan. Jutovic. Now Steiner. And it breaks for Jong. Finding a way out on the right to Orlando. The advantage played here by Jim McCluskey. There was a foul. The ball rolled on for Sosa. One of those nights, I've been saying, more and more it looks that way for Austria Salzburg. And Walter Zenger, if he's leaving into, he's leaving in inspired form. Bertie! No one near him, he just couldn't locate the ball at the crucial moment. Zenga now having to judge the bounce. It's all part of the goalkeeper's art these days. But you have seen here what a strong side Salzburg have become. Back in the mid-80s, they seemed to be down and out as a club. They had a gate game of just over 400 that really was the lowest point Hans Krankel then played a part in reactivating football they would have merged with another club uh, in the town had that uh, been able to uh, go through happily it was stopped and some with an injection of money which always plays a crucial part Salzburg have gone uh, from strength to strength. Many of these players will be in uh, the Austrian side for next.
next week's international against Poland. But it looks as though they're going to go into that as losers and Inter are going to have their ribbons on the UEFA Cup. And it's going to be defeat with honour for Austria Salzburg. That could hardly have been construed as a back pass, but Conrad was taking no chances. Headed by Ferry. Berti. Bergkamp to the right, Sosa to the left. Here's Jonk. Bergkamp. Quite deep enough to find Bertie's head. Pagadine trying to get in on the act. Bergkamp. Pushed out of that, leading into him, but... Uh, to the referee, third cap is the first culprit. Chris Dalla had to get back behind his desk. His job as the personnel manager. Oh, <laughs> there you are. There's uh, the referee acting as an extra man for Inter. Another indication that. Salzburg are going to come second here. Steiner. Eigner. Steiner. Can't do that. That was uh, a cynical shove on Paganin. And the substitute gets a yellow card saying that he was impeded first of all but it was unnecessarily petulant the reaction it ends sportingly enough Steiner realising the error of his ways a yellow card just to help him do that this season Inter almost home and dry here if I can use that expression on such a wet night and maybe more to cheer here's Ruben Sosa and still offside against Bertie and next Wednesday on SBS it will be the Champions Cup we'll be looking at Milan and Barcelona a mouth-watering prospect from the Olympic Stadium in Athens. First of the trio of European pieces of silverware going to Arsenal when the Italians were the losers, of course, in the shape of Palmer in Copenhagen last Wednesday. Paganin, Ferry, but here's Liner. Lining up in the centre. They'll stay there for a corner. These Salzburg players. Eichner uh, leaving it to Steiner. Oh, Liner. Tripic is in there. And Steiner hoists it back in. Zenga has to come. He's always been a man to revel in the limelight, but to get into the limelight you have to be gifted and he's a very gifted goalkeeper. Jonk. Throw given to Inter. Significantly now, there is 
pretty much silence from the Austrian end of the ground. And the 72,000 Inter fans are perhaps just drawing breath, ready for the celebration of the presentation. Battistini. Inter won the Champions Cup in 64 and in 65. And were twice runners up in that competition. 67 and 72. The UEFA Cup winners three years ago. A trophy they know and they're going to surely see again very shortly. It's been a very close run thing. Not just tonight, but in the uh, first leg as well. But never has been the old adage of putting the ball in the back of the net. In truer. Inter have done that. Salzburg haven't. Here's Jucevic, came through to him, the uh, sliding challenge by Manikone. Orlando has done well blocking off the approach down his side of the pitch. Just like the player he's replaced tonight, Bianchi. He's done for several years for Inter. But what will the Inter side look, at the, look like at the start of next season? venture to suggest very different from this one Bertie Bergkamp it's not really been a major influence on the match didn't play in the uh, second leg two years ago for Ajax it never serves me right he was ill was out there just as he has been significantly with the only goal of his second leg. Battistini <laughs> or Bergkamp might emerge from the shadows here. And still might. Still Bergkamp. Oh, how did that not reach? Nicola Berti by the far post. Way by Huta. But the snap has gone out of Salzburg now. And it's understandable. They've put so much in and had nothing to show for it. The flag goes up to so the surprise of Inter. I don't think it's against Bergkamp. Maybe he was coming back from an offside position. A free kick has been taken from this side. on their side. Here 
Vucevic rather running into Ferry. Behind him was Fyrasinga. He's forced on from midfield whenever he's been able to do so. Metaphorically, the Inter fans are putting their party gear on now. Line it. Fire sinker outside him. Line the shots. It's an interesting one, but didn't get too far in the end. Marquinho rolls here for... Fiasinger has to be better to uh, bewilder Zenga in this form with a cross. We're in a setting in now. Minch have been given a real run for their money in this UEFA Cup final by the underdogs, but the money the trophy is going to be theirs. Photographers getting into position. And just to be absolutely sure in the uh, Italian way of things, there's going to be uh, a tactical substitution right at the last here. Initially, the number 11 went up, but they changed it to number 10, and it's Dennis Bergkamp who comes off early to be replaced by the younger of the two Paganines, Massimo. So they're on the pitch together in a European final. Great thrill for the Paganine family. Massimo Paganine's actually on loan here from Brescia. Rather go through the motions, herring to get the ball to restart the game. Orlando. Ruben Sosa, here's Paganin, didn't get there, Bertie does! Another goal would be unfair on the Austrians, I have to say that. ball by Marquinho we're just waiting now for the final whistle well it has been a Jekyll and Hyde season for Inter on the verge of relegation in the league but here they are, closing in on the UEFA Cup. And the finishing line is very much in sight. They'll press the tape in a moment or two. Meisinger's header. Eigner. But if you didn't know too much about some of these Austrian players, you'll remember their commitment, their challenge here, and the odds seem stacked against them to make a match of it, but Inter have won the UEFA Cup, thanks to a goal in the first half of the first leg, and one here, 17 minutes into the second half of the second leg, Vivian got it, but around that, Walter Zenger gave a masterful display, once Italy's number one goalkeeper for many years too and looking as though the years have treated him kindly here 34 years old but in splendid form and the fact that he's being featured tells you something about how close it was Salzburg wanted to come here 
and take the game to Inter and manfully they tried. We shouldn't forget that Inter with Sosa and Bergkamp at times running free, some defensive errors from Salzburg in the first half that they could have sealed it up early on, but they didn't. And Salzburg kept on trying, never until really the last few minutes lost the feeling that it might just happen for them. But when the ball hit both of Senga's posts from the Brazilian Marquina, I think they realised that it just wasn't to be. And the expected winners have materialised here. The scoreline shows that it was a narrow thing, and it should be remembered as that. The Inter players gathering in the centre circle, rightfully proud of what they've done in this competition. It wipes away from the immediate memory a series of awful performances in Serie A. But the Salzburg players getting an ovation here from the Austrian fans, but also I think the Inter fans will recognise the part that they've played in making this a match tonight and not a procession. Ruben Sosa has had two good years here personally. But we wonder what the future holds for him. He'll certainly be in demand if Inter don't want to keep him. He is under contract for another season. Well, we await now the moment that is the ultimate reward for all the effort that's gone in. Inter past Rapid Bucharest, Apollon Limassol, Norwich City, Borussia Dortmund, Cagliari in an all-Italian semi-final. And now successful against Salzburg, the surprise package from Austria. But they won't be a surprise anymore, will they? They've spread the word around Europe and they may well be in the Champions Cup next season. You would wish them well. But the praise here in the end, it's for Inter. Pepe Bergami, who's done so much down the years at this club, receives the trophy from Lennart Johansson. And Walter Zenger, you can say the same about him, and especially tonight, a terrific performance from the veteran goalkeeper, Ruben Sosa. And down the line it will go. It's the moments here that winners treasure. They happen all too fleetingly. But in the era of uh, videotapes, all these players will be able to treasure images of this for the rest of their lives. Dennis Bergkamp now can turn his thoughts to the World Cup with Holland and Vim Jonk as well who's shown what a goal-scoring eye he has from midfield again here. Mi scuso, ormai lo chiamavo sempre Malik, mi scuso con i telespettatori. Però mi fa piacere, un piacere enorme aver vedere i giocatori dell'Inter alzare quella coppa che io non ho neanche visto i cartolini. Io vedo che Marco Francioso sta tentando il miracolo, e cioè Walter Zenga, protagonista della serata. Chiaramente Marco appena sei pronto chiedimi pure la linea, ti vedo insieme a Walter, sei pronto? Sono insieme a Walter, ah, perfetto. tantissimi complimenti Walter, sei giustamente acclamato da tutti come protagonista della serata. Guarda sono contento per l'Inter, avevamo bisogno, è l'Inter che vince, poi domani, domani vedremo. È un Inter che dopo tante critiche mostra il suo lato bello. Siamo noi, è bellissimo con tutta questa gente. Guarda, è veramente una grande gioia. Negli ultimi quattro anni uno scudetto e due coppe UEFA. Walter, dicono che sia la tua ultima partita. Ma chi se ne frega? A te Sandro. È bellissima questa risposta di Walter.
opera è fantastica si è voluto godere fino in fondo ha questa coppa non gli confermare fare... quello che avevi detto tu cioè il giocatore questa sera ha pensato a questa partita no, assolutamente anche perché secondo me è convinto che dopo questa prestazione certo ovviamente quello che verrà domani un posto lo troverà sempre ecco ci sarà anche la componente emotiva secondo te nelle valutazioni che farà Pellegrini da domani io ho, Pellegrini sempre... Con bianchi, no, io ho sempre sperato che ci fosse nel mondo del calcio mm. ma questa più che eh, di, di, di cuore direi che più affettiva è proprio di rendimento eh, e di quello che certo. ha fatto vedere in campo di essere un grandissimo portiere di meritare ancora per diversi anni nonostante i 34 anni Walter questa maglia vedete la gioia irrefrenabile di tutti i protagonisti è una liberazione non soltanto per i tifosi ma anche e soprattutto per molti dei giocatori qui vediamo i tifosi delusi del Salisburgo ancora Marco Francioso con Marini vai con Marco, Marini. Vai. un abbraccio da parte del, del pubblico Marini se lo merita a questo punto dopo tante sofferenze qualcosa Marini sì sicuramente il pubblico questa sera è stato meraviglioso ci ha incitato dal primo minuto all'ultimo e penso che questa coppa ce la siamo meritata in virtù della prestazione che abbiamo fatto a Vienna ma soprattutto in virtù della grandissima prestazione che abbiamo fatto ecco Marini aveva detto adesso questo ultimo capitolo poi torno con i ragazzi adesso che ha vinto qualcosa inizia a prenderci forse un po' di gusto No, assolutamente, adesso voglio gioire insieme ai ragazzi, insieme al mio presidente, insieme alla società, insieme a questo meraviglioso pubblico. Domani sarà un altro giorno e da domani vedremo il da farsi. Ma Grazie Marini, la lascio al suo trionfo, la linea Sandro Piccinini. Grazie Marco. No, volevo allora. dire, secondo me hanno visto via col vento ultimamente, perché tutti hanno detto, mi sembra una frase di Raffaella Oaran, proprio l'ultima frase di via col vento che dice domani sarà un altro giorno, mi sembra, non vorrei sbagliarmi, ma anch'io ho visto quel film, però è così, è giusto godersi fino in fondo questa sera io direi di sottolineare anche la prestazione degli uomini di Baric che sono stati veramente all'altezza della situazione hanno dimostrato di valere questa doppia finale e quindi hanno dato in qualche modo lustro al trionfo dell'Inter ma direi di sì, ma si vede anche come vengono salutati dal proprio pubblico ecco che rivediamo il gioiello di Ion stupendo perché la cosa più difficile secondo me l'ha fatta subito che non ha calciato, non ha cercato subito di calciare il pallone in porta ecco che si rivede Sosa che passa a Ion che vedendo che Liner si stende per, pre, eh, prevedendo un suo tiro invece lo, lo aggira e colpisce con un pallonetto perfetto l'uscita di Corrad due perle secondo me in una sola azione prosegue il giro d'onore Sosa scatenata ecco l'aeroplano, attenzione eccolo qua ha inventato lui eh? ricordo dopo la punizione col Parma se non sbaglio in campionato senti abbiamo visto prima, eccolo qua Nicola Berti dicevo un momento particolare per lui domani la discussione per il contratto poi sui mondiali non hai dubbi Beh no, non si può non portare un giocatore del genere, un giocatore che secondo me quando, quando è venuto su, quando è, è tornato dall'infortunio ha dato una mano importante ma non solo, non solo dal, dal punto di vista tecnico ma proprio dal punto di vista caratteriale, ha dato una spinta a tutti quei giocatori che magari in certi momenti del campionato avevano abbassato la testa, li ha spronati, li ha aiutati ed è stato determinante perché il gol dell'andata è stato determinante in questa doppia sfida. È bello rivedere gioie di entusiasmo e di trionfo per una maglia come quella nero-azzurra che ha vissuto direi troppi momenti negativi per una società che vanta una storia no, come, come poche altre. È bello ed è giusto rivederla a questi livelli. Ma io stavo dicendo a chi lo dici perché io tra tre anni qua non è che abbia, anzi ho vinto solo una Coppa Italia, però mi dà, se mi credete mi dà un'enorme soddisfazione vedere questi miei compagni alcuni dei miei compagni di gioire soprattutto questa maglia vedere ancora una volta che si, si innalza più in alto delle altre importante per tutto il calcio italiano aver recuperato sul grande palcoscenico internazionale una grande come l'Inter che ha regalato per tanti anni tante emozioni e tanti trionfi a tanta gente qui vediamo Bergampillon che è la coppia che ha saputo riscattare nel finale di stagione un campionato non esaltante ancora Marco Francioso Marco eh, Nicola Berti ah, Nicola bene. tanta attesa sei stato un po' fermo ti sei riposato eh? per vincere questa coppa beh direi di sì insomma la voglia era tanta dopo cinque mesi e mezzo di assenza sono diventato il momento giusto e è stato tutto bene tutto contento tutti contenti ecco qualche tuo compagno ha detto che questa è la vera faccia dell'Inter 
Ah, direi di sì, direi che in Coppa ci siamo espressi sicuramente meglio che, che in campionato e, e la Coppa ce la siamo proprio meritata e siamo stati bravi, un po' meno in campionato. Senti, domani è un giorno importantissimo per te, per due motivi, uno per il rinnovo del contratto e l'altro forse i 22. Adesso vediamo, e innanzitutto gustiamoci questa fantastica serata e domani... Sì, ma il vediamo è riferito al contratto o a Sacchi? Ma tutte le cose, vedremo domani no? come, come, come andranno le cose. Tu cosa speri? Tutto. <ride> e con questo tutto di Nicola Berti ti ricedo la linea. Grazie Marco, intanto abbiamo intervistato Zenga per una mega coppa. <ride> la gioia incontenibile e giustificata, il rapporto anche a tutte le paure che hanno accompagnato l'Inter direi in tutta la stagione ma anche in questa partita che è stato un po' il simbolo no, di tutto l'anno cioè un Inter dalle grandi potenzialità certo. che poi però ha dovuto soffrire fino all'ultimo sprecando quel potenziale anche tecnico che indubbiamente aveva e eh, troverò a lavorare proprio su questo Bianchi dal punto di vista psicologico perché ha avuto praticamente attimi di smarrimento proprio quando poteva avere la partita in mano e dovevano essere gli avversari a essere in difficoltà però direi che poi alla fine forse stasera ha saputo soffrire più delle altre volte, cosa che magari in altre partite non gli era successo. Continua il tripudio e direi anche i tifosi austriaci possono essere soddisfatti per la prestazione della loro squadra, non per il risultato, ma direi che globalmente analizzando le due partite sulla vittoria meritata dell'Inter non ci possano essere dubbi. Ed ecco ancora Bergkamp che sta per rientrare per ultimo negli spogliatoi, no, c'è ancora Zenga comunque chiuderei di fermarci un attimo per un po' di pubblicità poi però torniamo per andare a collegarci direttamente dagli spogliatoi per rivedere le fasi salienti per parlare anche magari un po' del futuro di quest'Inter a tra pochissimo